Hello and a big welcome to all of you out there who is listening and see this uh, podcast for today. And we have a special guest today. It's Paloma Bacci and you live in Switzerland. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Big, big welcome to you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure. And uh, yeah, would you please tell us what you are doing? It's very exciting, I think. Yes. Yeah, so I am an animal communicator and life energy consultant for animals. I have been doing this for over 22 years now professionally. And it all started with my horse, Yomi. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. He was actually the one who told me what I needed to do in order to be able to hear all the other animals. Mm -hmm. And it all started in the barn. <laughs> okay. So let's go back to 1998. Yes. Know, like a long time ago. Oh, oh, I was a doll though already then. <laughs> <laughs> um I went came back from a horse ride with my horse Leomi, and I put him in the barn and he was with another group of horses. And in that group there was this white horse. And I put Leomi into the barn. I went back to the car. There was nobody left at the barn. Actually, it was summer. It was late. Yes. And all of a sudden, when I came to the car, I heard somebody say, stop. Okay. Now, you can imagine I was very surprised because I yes. didn't expect anything like that. So I thought, well, maybe it's the neighbor who has seen me, wants to tell me something. So I turned around. So nobody, but this white horse standing in the same paddock as Leomi, he was looking at me very, very intensely. And then I thought, okay, I'll have to go back. So I just have the feeling, I had the feeling I had to go back. Yeah. So I went back and then I had the feeling I had to turn around the corner and around the corner, the horses used to have two barrels filled with water. Yeah. Now the, the two barrels were tipped over, so okay. there was no water for the horses so mm -hmm. i put up the barrels filled them with water looked around and saw this white horse observing me and i thought well it's probably thirsty so i filled up the two barrels the white horse came put the nose into one barrel didn't drink put the nose into the other barrel didn't drink looked at me and i had the feeling to get a thank you you know, you can imagine me standing there, my jaw dropped, sort of. Mm, yes. uh, mm. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? What just happened? You know, what was that? <laughs> so I knew something had happened. I had no clue what it was. But I knew I had to tell the story to somebody. Yes. And I couldn't tell it to my then husband because he wouldn't have understood, you know, this connection between animals and humans. And no. so back then... There were these email groups. I don't know if you remember them. You know, before social media, before forums and all that, you know, mm. we had email in the, groups. In the Stone Age. <laughs> <laughs> in the Stone Age of Internet, yes. <laughs> we had email groups. So there was this email group about natural horsemanship. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of people there from, well, most of them were from the US and from Canada. And I just told the story in the group. I didn't expect any answers. I didn't expect anything. But I got answers. Yeah. And they were saying like, oh, the horse contacted you. Oh, that was the horse uh, talking to you. Oh, that was animal communication. You know, and I was like, oh, 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 what's that? What's that? Yeah. That, you know, the sort of that that's what I have been missing. Because, you know, when, when I was a child, and I think all children are more, all children are the same, more or less, they have a very, I had a very intense connection with animals, mm -hmm. you know, like 
I, I, I went, um, I took dogs for walks, you know, from the neighbors and so, and, and I had this special bond with the dogs. I could tell them something and they would do it for me. Things mm -hmm. that they would not do for their people. And then mm -hmm. adults told me, what have you done? How have you done it? And I was so, so well, I just told them, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as a child, you don't really know what you're doing. You just, you just told them. Mm -hmm. Now, when I grew older and I became an adult, I noticed something had changed. I still had a very good connection with animals, but something had changed. And that was the missing link, you know, that, that connection with that horse that day. You know, that was the missing link. So I started to investigate to I mean, animal communication. What's that? Mm. So I came across Penelope Smith, who is a pioneer in the realm of animal communication. And I ordered her cassettes. You know, back then there were cassettes. The younger generation will not know what a cassette <laughs> tape is. <laughs> but sometimes you used, you know, a pen to actually... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Put it back in place. Yeah. Uh, you know, that it was we, a... we thought that was very modern at that yes, time. Yes. Yes, yes. So it was basically it was um you know, like we put information on cassette tapes and then yes. we listened to them. So I ordered her cassette tapes, I ordered her books, and I learned animal communication on my own for about two years. Mm -hmm. And then Penelope Smith actually came to Switzerland. And I went, you know, visited her courses, obviously. Yes. And it was there that my horse, Leomi, really told me, you have to do it like this and this, and then it's going to work. And from that moment on, it worked. So, yes, everything really started with Leomi. If it wouldn't have been for Leomi, we wouldn't be sitting here, really. Uh -huh. yeah it, it's fantastic but but then i think okay i've been around horses for many many years but i have never experienced a horse talking to me <laughs> they can they can show me in their language what what they want to but this uh feeling or you i i suppose you see pictures as well when you are communicating Yes, I, I can see pictures. Mm -hmm. It's um, You can also just have a feeling. And, and you're saying a horse never talked to you. I wouldn't put it that way. I would put it another way. There are two different ways of telepathy because that's, that's the language we're talking about here. You know, mm -hmm. There's conscious telepathy and there is unconscious telepathy. And the unconscious telepathy is working all the time. Mm -hmm. And if we look at telepathy, what, what the word telepathy itself means is tele is thin distance, pathy is feeling. So basically, it's a feeling at a distance. And I'm convinced everybody that is around horses, including you, <laughs> <laughs> have had the feeling at some point, oh, yes. I need to do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, I need to do this. And yes. my horse needs this and this yes. right now. You mm. just knew it. Mm. You don't know how you knew it, but you just knew it. And basically, the way it works for most people is the animal communicates very consciously telepathically and the human picks it up unconsciously. Mm. And I like through the unconscious and and the way animals act, actually, is they go, what I call, they, they connect with the human through what I call the back door, you know, like sort of they come in through the back yeah. door. Yeah. <laughs> they deposit their ideas and their needs into the human. And the human, at some point, has an idea. And then they think it's their idea. No, no, I'm sorry to to you know to tell you it's not your idea. It's usually the animal telling you things, and then it comes up as an idea, and you think it's your idea. <laughs> wow, yeah, that is that is a, a new perspective. You are right. It's it's um, you 
almost always know what your horse uh, wants to because you can see it and feel it. Uh, I, I call it more that uh, we have energies that we are, are spreading around and you you will always feel if the horse is in a bad mood or, or yeah something like that as you can with your friends. Um, if your friend coming into the room and, and it's uh, like oh and you the first thing you would say, what, what is wrong with you? Do, are you sick or is it anything? You can feel it in the atmosphere. Yes. Basically, telepathy is the language of the feelings. Mm. That's what it is. You know, so yes. And, and that's the way we communicate with each other. Energy is the most important thing in our communication. Yes. So it's not just with humans that energy is important. Energy is very important in the communication with animals as well. Yeah. The way you show up, the way you show up, the, the energy you put into it mm. is, is so important. It's the most important thing. And I was teaching my students yesterday actually about this, about the energy. And one of them asked, well, but what? do you do when you want to calm the animal down? And I said, well, energy, showing up with energy doesn't mean to be you, that you have to be very lively and, and very nervous and, and, you know, like sort of, woo, woo, woo. No. That doesn't mean putting in a lot of energy in there. You can put a lot of energy, a lot of calm energy in there. The way you show up, the way your energy shines through you that's that's really the important thing. I mean, everybody that is uh, watching or listening have probably experienced that you are in a room and then all of a sudden somebody walks in and the room quiets. Hmm. You know, and that person hasn't said anything. No, <laughs> they just walked right. in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's their energy. Yeah. You know, it's... Energy is everything. Energy is the most important thing when, when it comes to communication. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the second most important thing is your, your body language. Yes. You know, and if and body language actually comes with the energy, because if your energy is strong, if you if you have a lot of energy that you put into something that you're doing, then your body language automatically is is, is correct. You know, you, you cannot sit like, like, you know, you were sitting there before, like sort of, oh, uh, oh I'm yeah. feeling so bad, you know, like, and feel a lot of energy. It's just not going to work. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And and you can put energy into other people or, or animals as well. Uh, you can see if you have your dog, you you just look at it and say, are we going for a walk? And then the dog is smock <laughs> like mm. that. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody can feel it. And and also I think it's has a lot to do with focus, what you're focusing on, because we people we have the language, so we can communicate with language, but horses don't have language. So this this is uh you you are hiding your natural way to communicate a lot of times i i see that in my students yes and you know if you think uh words are just 7% of our communication mm, that's right so and and you're saying horses don't have language well they do have language then it's their it's yes, their, they that... have a sound language y yeah <laughs> and, and you just we don't understand it i mean if if a person comes in here now speaking mandarin you're not gonna understand it i'm not gonna understand it and uh, understand it but they're speaking their language yes. and for us it sounds like uh, sounds yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the same with 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 horses and, and and dogs oh i have a wonderful story to tell here yeah. i once was in in spain and uh, i had a student staying overnight you know at at uh, at my place 
So she had her dog with her. And my dogs know they are not allowed in the kitchen. Mm. When I'm cooking and doing something in the kitchen, they're not allowed in the kitchen. Oh. And the reason why is because, you know, I can turn around and if the dog is standing behind me and I have something it's hot in, in my hands, yeah. it's dangerous, just dangerous. Mm. Yes. So my dogs are not allowed in the kitchen. So the dog, my, my student's dog kept coming into the kitchen mm. and I kept telling the dog to go outside. And I kept telling my student, would you please, you know, keep your dog outside of the kitchen? Yeah. So the dog kept coming into the kitchen and I, you know, thought I was smart <laughs> and this sort of, <laughs> yeah. Now, obviously, the dog didn't react to that, you know, sort of, you know, so. <laughs> I don't <obviously>, understand. <laughs> exactly. So I he didn't understand everything. So he, I went out of the kitchen again. So my friend, uh, my, my student took her it out of the kitchen again. The dog came in again at, at an, another time. And my dog, Nebo, realized that I was trying to tell the dog something in what I made up as dog language. Yes. Now, the dog comes in, neighbor comes in, goes like, <laughs> the dog turns around, walks out of the kitchen, never came back in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> he helped his, his mother, or what you call it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. So... I, I think I just didn't get the words right, you know, when I threw oh. it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I but yes, it... I, energy yeah. And, and, and focus. Focus is so important. You mentioned focus. And you can see it with a magnifying glass. You know, that's, that's a, I think, one of the best examples where you can see that focus is so important. If you if you take a, a piece of paper and you put a magnifying glass over it and the sun shines through the magnifying glass, mm. the paper eventually starts to burn. Yes. No? So if you take the magnifying and what the magnifying glass does is it focuses the sun sun rays and, and you know focuses to one point and then it starts to burn the, the paper. Yes. If you take the magnifying glass away and you put a piece of paper into the sun nothing happens no it doesn't even get the sunburn you know it's, it's no. it, nothing happens <laughs> that's right yeah <laughs> so yes focus is, is very important you, you need to focus the energy you, you uh, on what you want really mm. and there is i don't know if you ever heard of um uh, there is a dog trainer or he was a dog trainer now it's his um his sons that are doing his work he he's called john lyons mm -hmm. and i remember I, I was following him when i had um I, I i had leomi and i remember him saying when you're on the horse you and and you want to to go into one direction for example you want to to turn your horse into to the right mm -hmm. Think about what part of the body you need to move. You don't need to move the whole horse. No. Most people think they need to move the whole horse. What part of the body do you need to move? You need to move one leg. Yes. You know? So focus on that leg that you want to move. You know? And I thought that's so smart. Yes. <laughs> Just focus on the part of the body you want to move mm -hmm. and then direct your focus there look at the part I thought that was so interesting and it really works I mm -hmm. did it so many times with Leomi look at the body part that you want to move and then you the way you sit on the horse automatically is going to shift in a very very subtle way mm -hmm. But that's going to give the input to your horse. And obviously, if you want to move the rear, you, you, you can't look at that, you know, because you don't no. have eyes in, in the back at the back of your head. But you can imagine it 
in yeah. your mind and then look at it in your mind. Mm. So I, I thought that was so smart. And you know, this method back then, over 20 years ago, that was, you know, just mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. And, and you can do a lot with your mind, with with animals and, and horses, especially. Yes, that is fantastic. Do you have horses yet or? Now I don't have a horse, no. Okay. No, no. Un unfortunately not. But uh, yes, um, I love horses. I yeah. have been around horses most of my life. I have uh, 45 years of um, horse experience. So yeah, I have lived a lot of situations with horses. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. But you but you have uh, you have customers who have horses, I yes. imagine. Yeah. Yes. I have uh, uh quite some customers with horses and I can help them, especially because I have 45 years of horse experience. Yes. And then, you know, you you can really um put yourself in the situation of the horse and 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 the person and it it is uh, experience is so important uh, I know there are animal communicators who have haven't got any experience with horses and then they get for example from the horse oh I don't like the bit that I have you know the snaffle bit or whatever mm -hmm. it is they have mm -hmm. in their mouth so I don't like it and they come up with the idea well take it out and just ride without it Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, yeah, you can't really do that with every horse. I mean, you you have to, you know, uh, look a little bit at the security as well. Don't mm -hmm. you know? You no, know, if you if you don't have experience, don't give this type of um, of, of of information of, of advice. No, of advice, yeah. yeah. So don't give an advice if you don't have experience. That's no. basically it, because it can really end very badly mm. i mean let's face it a horse is a flight animal mm. you sure. know and i mean every rider should also know that they don't have control over the horse just no. they don't so that's an illusion <laughs> yeah it is yes <laughs> and but obviously the horse is trained in some way mm -hmm. and depending on how the horse is trained you can do one thing or another I mean, I can I can remember once I was uh, riding Leomi. I I was riding Leomi with a friend, and and she had her horse. She had a snaffle bit, and uh, I was riding Leomi with a bite biteless thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember her saying, "Oh, can I borrow your thing once to go?" on a horse ride and then she would go you know with four reins instead of just two mm -hmm. and then you know so that she had this the security to be able yes. to hold on to the the one with the snaffle bit yes. if there wasn't if there was a problem mm -hmm. so i look at her and i go like and i felt i felt into the situation and i said well you can have it right now and she goes like what and well you can have it right now i took it off leomi gave it to her put it on her horse and i rode back without anything yeah like you know i ha I didn't have any reins or anything i mean i, I, mean, I, I had the saddle that was yes. it <laughs> yes <laughs> and we rode home we even did a canter we cantered you yeah. know and i went in front and we cantered yeah and uh and she was like going whoa and then when we were back i said look i wouldn't have done that maybe another day i just did it because it felt right yeah right right that moment it just i knew i could trust leomi 100 mm. percent in that moment that everything was going to be okay but there were other days you know, where maybe Leomi was not in the mood mm. and I wouldn't have done it. Oh. You know, you really have to know your horse so well. And and 
and you 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 need to go with your gut feeling you yeah. know don't don't do something somebody else tells you just because they're an expert mm. That's There's right. so yeah. that's so so many horses and also dogs and other animals are mis mis mistreated really mm. just because they their people do things that they were told by experts which are completely crazy and and mm. not good for the animal not good for you and then the relationship is is, is totally broken after that so. Go really with your gut feeling. If it doesn't feel good for you, don't do it. Even if an expert tells you, mm. you know, there's an that's, expert for everything. That's a, a very good advice. Yes. I, I talk a lot with people who are around horses. And, and as I said, don't sell your horse if it shows you that... Uh, it it will it will not be good today because then you have already started a fight and and this shouldn't be a fight it should be a relationship and um, from both sides yes definitely i when i started to uh, talk with animals mm -hmm. i always asked Yomi, what do you want to do today what is it you want to do? Do you want yeah. to go for a walk? Do you want to go on onto the paddock and and do some groundwork? Do you want to go for a horse ride? For a ride? What what, what do you want to do? So really, I I, I asked my horse, and mm. depending on the feeling I got from him, that's what I did. And if I did that, everything was okay. However, if I did something else. That wasn't a good idea. <laughs> no, <clears throat> but you have a lot of people who would say, yeah, then horses always choose not to do anything. But that is not right because the horse, right. the horse love to do things, but on their terms. Yes, yes. So ask your horse, do you want, does he want to carry you today? Mm -hmm. Maybe he does, then maybe he doesn't. Well, if he doesn't, don't sit on him. No. Yeah. Take Do something else. Yeah. Oh, yes. to, yeah. Exactly. Now I used to go for a walk with Leomi. I, I didn't have a, a you know a, a leash or anything. And um and he was just walking. He 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 went before, you know, he, he just walked on and then he stopped and he took uh, ate a little bit of grass and he waited for me and then yes. I would walk up and he would you know, sort of go on again, and sometimes I, he stayed grazing. You know, like sort of, mm -hmm. oh, I'm, I'll stay here and eat some more grass, and I'll walk on, and then I'll on I, I, until, come on, let's let's move on, and he'd come on galloping. You know, like a crazy guy, yeah. <laughs> like a dog. In... Yeah, exactly, like yeah. a dog. <clears throat> and there was this elderly couple that crossed us one day, and then they said. We have been watching you, but this is a horse. And I go like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's but dinosaurs. <laughs> it's, <laughs> he's behaving like a dog. And I go, yeah, well, yes. He mm -hmm. he trusts me. Yeah. I trust him. And I think trust is just so important. Mm -hmm. It's trust and respect that we need to, to give to our animals in order to get it back from them yeah. however most people do it the other way around they think the animal has to respect me first mm. and then i I'll must be the leader exactly yeah. mm. i must be the leader and that's so wrong because it's a team and mm. in a team everybody does what they can do best yes I mean, I have handed over the lead to Leomi several times. Mm -hmm. I remember once, uh, you know, when, when, when I was still working as an employee, we had to go horse riding when it was dark in the winter, obviously. Mm -hmm. So one, one evening, I, I met a friend at the barn and we decided to go, you know, for, for a ride. Now the problem was it was very foggy, mm. so we let the the light on, 
in at the barn. We let the light on because and anyway, it was dark. We let always the light on when we left the barn. Mm -hmm. So we started our ride and it got foggier and foggier and foggier. And it got so foggy, I couldn't even see my horse anymore. No. I, I couldn't I couldn't see the saddle. Wow. It was so foggy. I mean, I couldn't see I mean, I couldn't see my friend either. Well, so I, I mean, really, I wasn't able to see anything. Now, I really got seasick on the horse. You can get seasick on the horse. You know, it's mm -hmm. moving, okay. and you don't have and you don't have anything to focus on. Mm -hmm. You don't if you don't have any point to focus on, and it's moving. Yeah. You, you end up getting seasick. Okay. So. We were we were walking with our horses, and I can hear my friend say, "I have no clue where we are." Hmm. And I said, "Look, I have no clue where we are either. I have a suggestion to make. I'm gonna let Leomi walk home because I knew Leomi would find his way home. Hmm. Oh, by the way, not all horses do, but I knew Leomi did. <laughs> yeah. So my friend said. Are you crazy? I go, look, no, I'm going to let him walk home. I'm going to give him the reins. Mm. I'm going to say, walk on, go home. That's what I told him. Yeah. So she said, well, well, well what shall I do? I said, well, do what you want. She, she decided to follow us. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so all of a sudden I heard this change uh, in the, in, in the, on from the ground so i knew mm. we were on a road yeah so I, I still had no clue where we were you no. know i just knew we we have we had changed from gravel to a road that i could hear that yes. so i thought i just hope this is the right road clear me <laughs> yeah and eventually he stopped and i got off the horse and we were at the barn so I totally trusted him yeah. that he would knew the way home. Yeah. You know, I just told him, just you go home. I, I you know, I, don't, I have no clue where we are right now. I'm seasick. Hmm. Please take me home. Yes. And he did it. But you can do that only if you trust your horse. If you if you have trusted your horse all along so far, you can't do it if you've never trusted your horse and then you will just take me home. The horse will not know what you want. No, that's right. That's right. But uh, many horses are good to find their home. Uh, often if if they buck off their, their rider, they always find home. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, and never ever tell your horse you're going to do something and then don't do it. Because mm -hmm. otherwise your horse might teach you a lesson like Leomi did. Once I, it was Christmas Eve. Well, it was the day before Christmas. And I promised Leomi to come to the barn and bring him some... Oh, I don't know what you call it in English. It's called marsh. Is it? Yes, is it, yes, I know. It's the same yeah, thing. Marsh. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I promised him to uh, bring him a marsh. Mm -hmm. Now the problem was, I had so many things to do and to prepare for Christmas Eve that I didn't go to the barn. So I contacted Leomi and said, "Well, I'm sorry. It's gonna it's gonna be tomorrow. I'm not gonna come to the barn today." There was also a lot of snow, actually. Mm. Yeah. And um, so Christmas Eve came. My mom came to my place. We celebrated Christmas Eve. And around 10 o'clock in the evening, I get a phone call from the woman from the barn. And she goes like, I'm so sorry. We have been looking for him for two hours. And they were like, what? What are you telling me? Okay. Le Leomi just bolted off. And they go like, what? Uh-huh. You know, the, the horse had been 
at the pasture, which was yes. covered in snow. Yes. But, you know, they, they were on the pasture enjoying the snow and running mm. around and everything. And usually when the horses were at the pasture, they just opened the pasture and the horses went back into their paddocks. Every yes. horse perfectly knew where they had to go. Yes. So Leomi went to his paddock. And right before going into the paddock, he turned around and bolted off. Okay, yeah. And they had been looking for him for two hours. Wow. And they couldn't find him. And the the, the, the good thing was, you know, there were this, um, um, on, on, on the snow, you could see where the horse went through. Yes, yes. And right. he, yeah. yeah, and he was uh, bare feet. So, yeah. you know, it, you could actually see, you know, oh, yes, that's the horse we need to follow. Yes. But they had been looking for him for two hours and couldn't find him. So eventually they phoned me and said, can you contact your horse and maybe, yeah. you know, <laughs> tell your horse to go back to the barn. Please phone home. <laughs> and when she told me that, it clicked in my head. I said, oh, no, don't tell me. Don't tell me Leomi has bolted off just because I hadn't gone to the barn. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't brought him his marsh. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, easy, I'm coming. Yeah. I'm I'm coming. So I, I you know I changed my clothes, you know, put everything on, jumped into the car, drove to the barn. It was about 15 minutes drive. So at about halfway, I mean, I contacted Leomi instantly. I said, Leomi, mm -hmm. I'm coming. I'm not bringing a marsh. Sorry, I mean, I I, I need to cook it first you mm -hmm. know <laughs> but i am coming i am coming i'm coming to the barn and about halfway to the barn the phone rings and this woman from the barn is at the phone and she said we have seen him he has shown himself and he is walking to the barn by himself mm -hmm. he is heading to the barn when I arrived at the barn, Leomi was standing in his paddock. Yeah. Yeah. So he had been hiding for two hours until they contacted me, until he got me into the car telling mm -hmm. him I am coming. <laughs> and only then he showed himself. Yeah. And he walked to the barn and got into his paddock on his own. Yeah. So be careful what you promise your horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will be thinking of that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a story I'll never, ever forget. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So... And you are helping other people as well when they have some troubles with their pets? Yes. Yes. People can contact me. And uh, what I need is a picture with uh, the name and age of the animal. And um, they can write down the questions. And then we can come on a Zoom, for example, and have a, a communication with the animal. Yes. Yeah. So you do it in distance. You don't have to be beside the, the animal. No, no, I can and can do it at a distance. Remember, mm -hmm. telepathy tele is distance. So yeah. it's it's feeling at a distance. And the distance it doesn't matter, really. I have had communications with uh, horses in Japan, actually. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> do they speak Japan then? <laughs> No, that they, they they speak telepathic. I think telepathy yeah. in itself is a language. Yes. You know, the, the, the feelings the feelings are feelings. It doesn't matter in which language, you know. We no. what what we do in, in in animal communication is we interpret the feelings. Yes. So you know, it doesn't matter whether a, a, a Japanese horse or a or a an American horse or a Danish horse mm -hmm. feels joy. It's joy. You know, yeah. feelings, feelings are vibrations at a special frequency. Yeah. And 
every feeling has its own frequency. And if you know the frequency this feeling is on, then you can interpret the feeling. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so if anybody out there wants to get to know their animal better <laughs> or they have some questions, where where can they find you? Well, I have a website. It's called uh, speciesspace.com. So you can go to speciesspace.com. Or you can also um, go to my podcast, Animal Empathy, and uh, listen to some very interesting episodes there as well. And I have a free gift for anybody who wants to know more about animal communication. I have a guide to animal communication with wow. where, where I walk you through what you need to do in order to communicate better with your animal. And I can give you the link if you want to, Anna. You can put it in the show notes. I will do that for sure. That's fantastic. What an offer. <laughs> yes, it's, you know, it, if if I can help that even one animal is better, then it's worth it. That's right. That's right. We make the world a better place to be for the animals. Yeah, yeah. one animal at a time. Yeah. And also for the humans, because when you have a pet that, that you don't understand and, and you're confused, uh, you you don't feel right. Uh, you have to uh, understand them and then you have your, your, your pets because you want to have have a good time with them, have fun and, and uh, be with them. And when you have an animal that you can't communicate with it's it's very difficult it is yes and so. and there is there is another thing that which i think is very important there is no quick fix no forget about quick fixes yeah forget about anybody that promise you a quick fix because that comes with a price mm. and the price is the well-being of the animal yeah so yeah if you want to sacrifice the well-being of your animal, you better don't have an animal. Mm, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And uh, as I always say with, with the time, why have a quick fix? What What do you want from your dog or your horse or, or what? Do, do you want them just to be there when you want them to? Or, or what is it that makes you feel that way? Take the the road to the fix <laughs> so to speak and make that funny make it a, a fantastic thing the the travel to instead of just have the goal in your mind yes the way is the goal yes that's right yes it's, so i think it's so so important we can learn a lot from our animals mm -hmm. we can learn so much from them i mean yeah. i even learned that you can make deals with animals you can oh, make deals I know that. <laughs> <laughs> well i was out with leomi and a friend and we were riding without a saddle and for some kind of reason, I think I saw a wonderful feather on the ground. I got off Leomi to pick up the feather. So then I wanted to go get up onto Leomi again. Mm. Well, Leomi wouldn't let me. You know, he kept, you know, tripling around and, and going yeah. backwards and, you know, from one side and the other side and sort of saying, no, you're not coming up here again. No. And... My friend tells me, well, I'm sorry, I would love to help you. But if I get off my horse, I wouldn't get to help you on your horse. I wouldn't get back on my horse either. And I go like, oh, great. So I I had a a piece of bread, you know, of uh, hard bread in mm -hmm. my in my pocket. One last piece of bread. Mm -hmm. And I communicated to Leomi and I said, look. I'm going to give you the piece of bread. In exchange, you let me go back onto your back. 
And I had a good feeling about it. Mm. So I actually gave him the piece of bread. I was still standing on the ground. <laughs> yeah. I gave him the piece of bread. And my friend says, what are you doing? And I'm like, bribing him. <laughs> sort of, you know, this is our deal. I'm going to give him the bread. And for that, he's going to let me back on his back. And she goes mm. like, oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? It mm. worked. Yeah. I gave him the piece of bread and he let me back onto his back. Mm. And I think what made the magic was the trust. Mm. I trusted him that if he if he takes the bread, he's gonna let me back onto his back. Mm. I think it was trust did the magic i think that was it but yeah. on in all those years that i have been doing animal communication i have been making deals over deals over deals with animals and it works does it work every time no of course not i mean <laughs> yeah it doesn't work every time but most of the time it does yeah. one thing is very very important it has to be a win-win situation this yeah. is very important. It has to be a win-win situation. It cannot be just a win-win for you. No. It has to be a win-win situation. If the animal sees it's a win-win situation, they are more than happy to make a deal with you. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that is so great. So if you out there wanted to have contact with Paloma, it's you are very welcome and uh, it has been a pleasure to have you here today i love your stories and i love your energy um and uh, i hope i've seen you again thank you so much for being here today thank you for having me it was a pleasure do you have anything more to say to the people out there trust your animals mm trust and respect your animals and they will trust and respect you back great words thank you very much and thank you for you out there who have been listening and i hope you wanted to see more of this so please subscribe on the channel and i'll see you again next week have a good time bye bye